All right, so in this series of videos, we're going to focus on problems that can be solved using recursion. And this particular problem will show how to solve using both an iterative solution and also a recursive solution. So the problem is we're given an input string and we want to determine where or what letter rather is the first uppercase letter found in the string. So I have three example strings here. This first string, the first uppercase letter is this one P. It's the only uppercase letter in this string. This input string two, two has two uppercase letters. The first one that it should encounter is L. That's the first one. And then input string three has no uppercase letters at all. So the function should go through the string and then should say that it wasn't able to find any uppercase letters. So we want to solve this problem using both an iterative and recursive approach. So let's go through the iterative solution first because maybe that's a little bit more intuitive and let's just start to write off a um, prototype for this. So we'll call this find uppercase iterative and then this is going to take an input string as an argument. And so what we're going to do with the general appro approaches for the iterative solution is we're just going to loop through every character in the string and we're going to check if the character that we're on in the loop is uppercase. And if it is, we'll return that character. And if not, we'll continue. If we reach the end of the string, we don't find any uppercase characters, then we'll print out a message that says as such. So let's do that loop. So we'll just loop through every character in the input string. So we're looping through this input string here. And then we're going to just have a very simple if condition. If the character that we're actually looking at is uppercase, so there's a function that Python has called is upper, which checks if that character is an uppercase string, uh, uppercase character. If that is the case, then we'll just return that character. So we'll return that because that is the first one that we should encounter. And then otherwise, if we go through the entire loop without encountering any uppercase character, we'll just return a message that says no uppercase character found. And that's pretty much it. So we can verify this runs by just printing out the output of this function. Uh, we can do this for all of the input strings. So let's do this for one. I'll go ahead and copy this and just change this to two and I'll change that to three. So if we go ahead and save that and run it, we get these uh, three things here. So the first, it was able to determine the first uppercase and only uppercase character in the first string was P, the first uppercase character in the second was L, and then no uppercase characters were found in the third string. So that looks right to me. So we'll go ahead and now think about how we can actually code up the recursive implementation of this. So the prototype for the recursive implementation is going to look a little bit different than the one that we did for the iterative version. And the reason for that is because we, we need to kind of, when we're doing a recursive approach, we need to constantly whittle down the problem. And one, thing, one way in which we can make that easier is sending an index into the prototype that tells it, let's start at the, st the front of the string. And as we pr process the string recursively, we're going to increment that index, which will thereby check recursively the next character in the string. So I should go ahead and write this out. Maybe it'll become clear when we actually see it. So we'll say find uppercase, not iterative, but recursive. This will take an input string as an argument. and will also take, uh, let's call it index, which will initially set to a default argument of zero, which means that uh, this is the index that we're currently processing in the input string and the start of that string is at in index zero. So let's think about our base cases. One base case is if the input string of the index that's passed in, if that is uppercase, if that's uppercase then we've hit a base case and we're just going to return the input string of index because that is the first uppercase character that we've encountered. So we'll go ahead and return input string of index and that should do the trick there. Another base case that we may encounter is if we go through the entire string and there's no uppercase characters. So in this case what's going to happen is we can check if the index, the number that we're passing in, is equal to the length of the input string minus one. So if this is the case then we know that we've went through the entire input string. The index value the next time it goes over would try to access an element of the string that is not present, so in a character that's not there. Therefore, we've processed all the way to the end of the string without actually seeing any uppercase characters. That's what this case takes care of. So in this case, we'll return a message, no uppercase character found. 
just like we did before for the iterative case. And then uh, we actually want to do our recursive step. So in this case, we're going to return, we're going to return a recursive call to this function. So input string doesn't change because the string that we're processing is exactly the same. The thing that is going to change on every recursive call is we're going to increment the index by one because we're going to check the next character in the string. So we're going to say index uh, plus one. And that will pretty much do it. So we can change, uh, we can also just, let's copy these things here, print them out here for the recursive calls. So I will replace this here with recursive, also this one here with recursive, and this one as well with recursive. And when we go ahead and run this, we should see the same outputs for both iterative and recursive. So indeed, we see PL no uppercase and again, PL no uppercase. So the first string of three corresponds to the iterative output and the last correspond to the recursive output. And they seem to agree. So that is pretty much it for this video. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything about the material found within, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.